we're confronting the most dangerous and the worst impacts of climate change in California. As we're speaking, there's families right now that don't have water. California is in the midst of the worst drought in over a thousand years. As climate change intensifies the drought, oil companies continue to extract fossil fuels and endanger California's dwindling freshwater supply. The oil and gas extracted in California is burned, releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This creates a vicious cycle. The greenhouse gases create more climate change, which worsens the drought and continues to reduce the amount of water we have. In combining that drought with the usage, the high amount of water that some industries use, not only for farming, but for oil, puts us on a brink of having no water anymore. Back in October of 2014, it was 250 families, then 300, and then it was 500, and now we're pretty close to 1,000 families. There were so many people coming in and I actually had 24 pallets of water sitting right here that day that came in very early in the morning. And at the end of the day, those 24 pallets of water was gone. Pues en, los, en un tiempo, hace los, uh, dos años, empezó a escasearse el agua, llover, y pues empezaron a, a escasear los pozos. Y lo que yo hice, pues en mi trabajo, empecé a traer agua para uh, ayudarnos con el agua. Mi nombre es Claudio Espuro. Vivo aquí en Portville por 10 años. Llegamos aquí pues de Los Ángeles, vivíamos en Los Ángeles y nos venimos aquí la familia a vivir y pues a trabajar ¿va? Para, para seguir viviendo. ¿va? Well, at first we didn't know what to do, but yeah, we did kind of freak out because we were running out of water and we had also heard other people running out of water. Siempre que lavo, lavo los trastes, todo el tiempo estoy haciendo eso, ¿verdad? Este, cuidando el agua un poquito más de lo que, de que no se desperdicie, ¿verdad? Porque pues, hace mucha falta el agua. Hay gente que no, no entiende, dicen, no, pero hay que, aquí hay agua, ¿no? Le digo, pero todos tenemos que cuidarla porque es para todo. Eh, es el, de donde viene es para todo. No es para mí nada más, es para toda la gente que vivimos aquí en este lugar que, que última, no sé, tiene como dos años que ya se está escaseando mucho. La gente a veces no, no piensa, ¿va? pero entre todos, porque una persona no puede, tenemos que ser toda la comunidad la que debe cuidar el agua. Tenemos que hacerlo porque si no, pues no podemos sobrevivir sin el agua. El agua es un... un uh, Algo muy importante para la vida de uno. Jerry Brown has his own historic battles to fight, 
a drought. Still, Jerry Brown does believe one state can lead the way on things like climate change. But activists believe Jerry Brown contradicts his pro-environment stance on the issue of fracking, the process of using high-pressure water to loosen underground oil deposits. Last year, he signed a law to study its effects, but in the interim, allow fracking to continue. So Governor Brown has said that California has the toughest fracking regulations in the nation. And quite simply, that's not true. For example, we don't have setback limits. And setbacks are extremely important for public health because they limit how close industry can operate. Another big problem with the regulations I find is that we don't have best practices for waste disposal. And the scandals over the past year show that the state doesn't know what it's doing because they have admitted that they may have allowed billions of gallons of fresh water to be contaminated because they didn't tell operators where or where they could not inject this waste under the ground. So folks are desperate and looking for fresh water. So I happened to be there just by chance and started videotaping what they're doing. And once in a while they'd open a valve and, and backflow would come out and just go into this open dirt pit. So I sent the video you know, to the regional water board and they said, that's illegal. The ponds on Thule Road are fairly small, but there's thick oil floating on them. The first pond is the thickest and it really stinks. Then it kind of goes by gravity into a second pond, there's a little less oil. Then a third pond, there's a little less oil. And then the water kind of goes out and directly to the uh, gully. When you go to these communities and you see how closely the schools and nursery schools and nursing homes and other places where vulnerable populations are letting the gas and oil fields, that the volatile organic compounds and chemicals that are used there, that the diesel powered equipment and trucks that are there are creating ground level ozone, they're creating the conditions for lots of different kinds of toxic chemicals. So that's an immediate thing that I'm worried about. I'm also worried about how we're going to be seeing many more respiratory diseases, both acute respiratory symptoms as well as more chronic diseases. So we'll see more asthma in children. We'll see more adult onset uh, diagnosis of asthma. And then we've got the whole cascade of things. As we have less water, we're gonna have less food. We have less food, the most vulnerable will have less nutrition. The communities in California are deeply courageous. We have community members who are primarily Spanish speaking, uh, farm workers who are willing to step out of their own comfort zone, um, spend time when they could be working or with their families to speak out about this issue because they're worried and rightfully so. There's a small community of chapter. Chapter must be like something like 15, maybe 20,000 people. In that community, there's uh, two recent cases of children. One of them is a boy. He's 10 years old. He has prostate cancer. The other one is about uh, a girl, 11 years old. Uh, she died last year, about six months ago, if I'm not mistaken. Mi historia pues comenzó quizás años atrás cuando yo me enteré y conocí a, a CRP y para mí fue algo, algo que nunca, nunca supe la magnitud de los problemas que California estaba enfrentando.
a mí me gustaba caminar mucho esta área, yo aquí vivo cerca, en las tardes me gustaba salir a caminar, hacer ejercicio, entonces no sabemos, si me vengo a caminar aquí, a lo mejor al rato voy a tener asma, voy a tener un cáncer o algo. Entonces, gracias a CRP que ellos nos comenzaron este, a instruir en todo lo que estaba sucediendo o todo lo que estaba pasando a raíz de fracking, fue de que nuestras preocupaciones, nuestros miedos comenzaron más. Exactamente no recuerdo cuánto, pero aproximadamente un año, a varios niños de la escuela Secuoya estuvieron enfermos incluyendo mi hija. Una amiga de mi hija murió por razones desconocidas. De alguna fuente nosotros nos informamos, lo único que supimos fue de que la niña comenzó con fuertes dolores de cabeza. Cayó a un hospital, andaba de hospital en hospital hasta que de un de repente cayó muy enferma, estuvo en casa y lamentablemente falleció. Mi hija dos, tres años atrás era una niña de lo más activa que usted pueda imaginarse. Corría, jugaba, practicaba deportes que aquí la ciudad uh, organizaba como softball, fútbol, uh, tenis, básquetbol, porque recientemente de un año a la fecha le diagnosticaron con ataques de epilepsia, pero también al igual ella comenzó con, con fuertes dolores de cabeza. Fuertes dolores de cabeza, náuseas, problemas de respiración. En una ocasión tengo otros dos hijos que los diagnosticaron con asma, pero hay personas que, que no saben. No se explican el por, qué, el por qué los dolores de cabeza, o quizás al igual como yo, que yo no sabía, yo creía que era un día duro, un día pesado en la escuela. Es doloroso que tu hija te diga, yo no quiero que a mí me vaya a pasar lo que a mi amiga. ¿Qué voy a hacer si mi hija me está pidiendo ayuda? I recently went there and we followed the water um, from where gas and oil was being extracted We went and stood by some of the holding tanks. One of which, a large one, was unlined. Unlined means that there's just soil there and then there are the toxic chemicals. And underneath we've got the aquifer and that's an aquifer from which they are getting, you know, water either that they're irrigating the crops with, or in some instances, it's the private wells that people are, are using for drinking. So, we have this game that you can all play and then I'll sign your papers. Who wants to play the game first? You can go a couple at a time. Okay, you guys can play. These are names of contaminants. This one says uranium. This one says nitrates, which come from the dairies where all the cows are. This one says DBCP. Which one do you think they are? What about this water? It's kind of hard to tell, huh? I think this one's arsenic. This one's uranium. Uranium often comes from the railroads and from mining. The Community Water Center is a nonprofit environmental justice organization that is working to bring water solutions to small towns in the Central Valley. Central Valley is ground zero of groundwater quality issues, and now we are in our fourth year of drought. So now not only do we have communities who have water that isn't safe to drink, but we also have communities without water. Nos han prohibido regar por días no más los jardines. Tenemos que regar cierta cantidad de agua, si no se nos multa. Ahora, las compañías de fracking gastan billones de agua. ¿Qué pasa con esa agua? ¿Quién le está quitando el agua a quién? 
Kern County, Bakersfield region is about 100 miles from Los Angeles, and this region produces more oil than any county in the country. Most oil fields produce water as a byproduct or a waste product. Chevron in the Kern River field takes that water, conditions it, and brings it into agricultural use. Through the process of gravity separation, the water and oil virtually separate, and then that water goes into huge walnut shell filters so that we can clean it to go to the Coelho Water District to be used for agriculture here in the valley. So some of the crops that we know have been using this irrigation wastewater, which it has been a journey to have public access to that information. It's taken years, but we do know it's being used on all sorts of things that many people around the world rely and enjoy on an almost daily basis from California. Um, it's part of our identity as a state. It's something our economy depends on. So those products include almonds, pistachios, grapes, various forms of citrus, all pomegranates, spinach, lettuce. There isn't a law right now that is requiring any company, any farming company or agricultural company of disclosing that they're using this wastewater. So that means there's no law saying that these companies have to disclose to you what water they use to irrigate your food before it reached you. Out on the tips of the branches, they dry up more. Mm -hmm. Those have come off. I just had a meeting with the regional water board, and he said, yeah. He says, we're checking. We're trying to find out if that water is safe to use on food crops. And that's a good thing. They wouldn't have done that without pressure from outsiders or people like me speaking out about it, you know the LA Times writing about it. But he said, ultimately, it's up to the farmer to decide if he wants to use that, and up to the consumer to decide if they want to buy that product. I don't use that water here, and I tell everyone I would refuse to use that water. EPA says that level, you know, it's not safe for drinking anymore, but is it safe to grow fruits that you eat? And my motive is to take a precautionary approach to the food we grow as a geographical region to make sure it's safe. I'm fully prepared to take a, a third of this orchard out and farm 20 acres instead of 36 if there's not enough water. If we're over pumping the groundwater, for, uh, we can't continue that way. My grandfather farmed just down the road on one side, my mother's father. My father's father farmed just down the road this way. My great-grandfather farmed also with my grandfather this way, my mother's parents. I'm part of the land here. I feel like I belong here. Uh, I can almost get <laughs> emotional about it. We're in the Kern River oil field near Bakersfield. I'm here to see the sites um, 
I've been hearing a lot about Bakersfield and the oil development here, the wastewater contamination that's been going on, as well as uh, oil wastewater being used to irrigate crops. I have never seen so many oil wells. There must be thousands right here in this one valley. When I first saw the view from the bluffs, you know, I thought, wow, I've seen a picture of this, but this is so much different in person. I mean, you really get the scope. There must be thousands of wells right here. It's very scary. So Santa Barbara County just saw a horrific oil spill in what's perceived to be the best regulated area of the state, possibly the country, using the safest form of oil transport possible. Uh, this isn't our grandfather's oil. It's heavier, it's thicker, it has more sulfur. There are going to be accidents. Oil transport alone is horribly dangerous. The same way that they're seeing the oil fields that pollute their communities, they can also see the windmills and solar farms. We have solar farms in Kern County as well. And they can totally see that we have different sources of energy. We don't have to totally depend on oil. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Because people are not doing it. No one else is doing it, right? And everybody has the power to do it. We keep complaining and we like complaining and everybody makes the plans of leaving Bakersfield at one point. But that's okay, we can make that plan. But there's families, children that are gonna be left behind. When are we gonna speak up for them? I think about my daughter's future. I think about the fact that we're gonna be running out of oil someday in her lifetime, definitely. I think about how she would feel if all the aquifers are contaminated with oil wastewater. There's no oil left for her generation to benefit from anyway, you know? That just makes me double down on my efforts to help us transition rapidly to renewable energies before it's too late. Wind farms and solar panels and to know that the water she's drinking is safe and pure, the food that's grown in California is not irrigated with toxic wastewater. I want her to know that her future is bright and that there's potential for, you know, for her to pursue any kind of future that she wants. The governor of California, in order to actually be a climate leader, what our definition of climate leader is, um, involves him taking some steps in order to stop us from uh, taking more oil and gas out of the ground uh, in the state of California.
the biggest steps that he can take to slow climate change are to listen to communities, to stand up to big oil, and to ban fracking in California. Quieren quisiera pues que todos los padres, personas que miren estos documentales, estos videos, que no crean que porque no viven en las áreas afectadas no les va a afectar. Esto de cierta manera impacta a todo el mundo. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Right now, over 15 million Americans are living within a mile of a frac site. There is nothing that a nurse sees in fracking that is good. Nothing. It is creating health risks all over this country. I'm most concerned that in California, that's this incredibly rich, creative, wonderful state, that we have a good plan for how we move quickly to renewables and create a healthier and safer California. Folks are fighting back. Folks have been going door to door. We introduced the first ordinance in the San Joaquin Valley in Arvin, um, trying to ban fracking, putting lawsuits together. There are thousands of folks. Kern County is actively resisting. We're allowing them to drill in the easiest way, the most preferred way that they desire at the expense of folks that many people find expendable. All Californians should be able to experience clean air and clean water, that those are rights. Uh, we must be and continue to be politically engaged and involved and get more people involved. Ahorita es cuando tenemos, estamos a tiempo de, de hacer algo. Y yo, yo quisiera que si nos uniéramos más para que nuestra voz fuera más escuchada. Basta el fracking, basta la contaminación. Niños, mujeres, a mover, a mover las, las comunidades, a traerlas, a que digan. People can be really active. Get to know your community. Get your word out there. Water is life. If four sources of water get contaminated, what are we going to do? There's a brighter future, and we can do it here, starting in California. We can create 100% renewable energy. We don't have to rely on these toxic, dirty, dangerous forms of fuel.